Welcome to r slash am I the jerk, where OP's coworker uses her dates for free food. Am I the jerk for cheating my coworker out of a free meal? I, 28 male, work with a woman named Lydia who's 24. She has a very annoying habit. She has a dating profile that she uses specifically to lure guys to buying her expensive dinners at restaurants she wants to try, and then she ghosts them. Lydia brags about this all the time and is never interested in actually dating, but she'll act like it to sell it. I can't stand this because it's playing with people's hearts, but Lydia thinks of it as a life hack to try food or drinks she otherwise couldn't afford. My friend Daniel, who's 32, is also on dating sites, but for the right reasons. His late wife passed away a few years ago, and he just started jumping back into the dating scene. Daniel's a very sweet guy, and I really want him to find a great lady for him. A few days ago, he texted me asking if I knew Lydia. They matched up and got to talking about work, which is how he found out that we worked at the same place. I told him all about Lydia's BS with the restaurant thing, and I made it very clear to him that he would do best to drop things with her early on. Daniel said that he would probably still do the date, but ask for separate checks. Well, they went out this past weekend, and on Monday, Lydia came into work very upset. I asked her how her date with Daniel went, and she ripped into me, asking if I was the one who told him not to pay for her dinner. Apparently, she had Daniel take her to a high-end steakhouse, and she ended up splurging. She got a drink, a full entree, and a side with dessert, where Daniel just ordered a sandwich and a salad. Her bill alone came to $70, and she was almost in tears at work as she didn't expect to pay for it, and now her car was low on gas. I got a little upset too, as she tried to use my friend as a literal meal ticket, but somehow she doesn't see it that way. Daniel told me later the date was going kind of well until he asked for separate checks, and then Lydia just got weirdly cold. So now Lydia's mad at me because I told someone about her little tactic and it backfired on her. I don't feel like I did anything wrong since it was a grieving friend that I was protecting, but other people at my work are saying that I should have stayed out of it because it was none of my business. Not the jerk. Her luck finally ran out. I question why Daniel still went ahead with the date after you clued him in, unless it was to show her up. In which case, fair play. It's my kind of petty. OP. He still went on the date because it's been a while since he dated and he wants to get more comfortable with dating again after his wife passed. I tried to talk him out of it altogether, but he said a first date would be good for him regardless. Not the jerk. She did this to herself. You didn't cheat her out of anything. Her shameful ruse didn't work. If she can't afford the food, then she shouldn't go to the restaurant. You did what was right and protected your friend from a scammer. The people saying you did wrong are people with opinions not worth caring about. Well, what do you think? Did OP do the right thing or should they have stayed out of it? Please let us know. Am I the jerk for telling my husband that if he pays me my hourly rate, I will do more housework? I'm a steam fitter, but I've been at it for a while and I'm in a supervisor position. With bonuses and incentives, but not counting benefits, I earn over $100 an hour. I also work out of town. I started doing that once the kids were old enough to take care of themselves with their dad at home. So when my youngest was in middle school and the oldest was a junior in high school. It's great. Our retirement savings are piling up and we've been able to splurge on the kids and ourselves. My husband is upset, however, because I decided to pay for a cleaning lady. He and I discussed it and we agreed that him and the kids didn't do a great job keeping the house clean and tidy while I was away. I hated coming home to a mess. It caused a few fights because it was like they expected me to come home and clean up after them. Having her is fantastic. I come home to a clean house and I'm happier. My kids have more time to study and do extracurricular activities. They still have chores and they are still expected to clean up after themselves. My husband came to me last time I was home and said we should cut back on the service when I'm home. That I should be doing more housework. He thinks that we're wasting money. I said that I work 14 days in a row and that those are 13 hour days. Yes, it is mostly paperwork, but his job as a teacher isn't much more physically challenging. I said that I could offer him two options. If he wanted, we could completely get rid of the service and him and the kids could make sure the house was in good shape when I get home. Or he could pay me my hourly rate to do extra housework when I am on my days off. He's upset with me and says that I'm being financially manipulative. I think if he and the kids actually did what they're supposed to do when I'm away, most of this wouldn't be an issue. 
so you can afford it. Everything gets done, everybody has free time. Nobody has to do anything they don't want to do. There aren't any fights over it. I mean, there's really no downside and everybody wins. Him getting upset because you said if the maid goes, he'll have to do his fair share is very telling. You're not home to make the messes, but you're supposed to work that much and come clean up after him just because he wants to save money while getting to sit down? People like your husband always reinforce my decision to stay single. Not the jerk. Ugh, I'm never getting married. Never getting married. Obligatory not the jerk. But really? Really? Men like that make me sick. This is why I'm never getting married. I'm a human being, not a maid. I refuse to end up stuck with some man-child that I have to take care of for the rest of my life. Imagine deciding to never get married just because of stories you read on Reddit. Today I messed up by confirming for the flight attendant that I'm a reverend. I was across the country, US, attending the funeral of my cousin who had passed away recently and I used my vacation savings to purchase first class plane ticket for my journey. It wasn't the fun vacation I had saved for, but I was glad I had stashed enough to shell out for the good seats, as I was in an absolutely horrible mood and I just wanted a little bit of comfort for myself in such an emotional time. I'm on the four and a half hour section of my trip home and we're just getting up to cruising altitude when I notice a bit of commotion at the back of the plane. I'm not in the mood for drama, so I ignore it and I put my headphones on to listen to some true crime podcasts. I'm starting to doze off when I get a tap on my shoulder. Looking up, I see a flight attendant motioning for me to remove my headphones. I slide them off one ear and she says, I'm sorry, but are you flying under the honorific title of Reverend? Are you a minister of some sort? A little background info. Way back in 2000, my sister was getting married in a secular ceremony and asked me to officiate. So I got my official ordination credentials through ULC, Universal Life Church, for that purpose. Since then, I've actually married six couples over the years, so it's been a super handy thing to have. Back to the flight. I'm confused why the flight attendant is asking. I'm thinking maybe she has a religious question, and even though I'm an atheist, I do have an advanced degree in religious studies and one in philosophy, and I can and will happily talk theology most days. Or maybe she has a question about getting credentials like I did. Curious, I answer to the affirmative. She follows up by asking, Can you please follow me? And motions to do so. Oh crap, I think. What if somebody's dying and they want last rites or something? I'm clearly not a priest. I don't know what I was thinking. Now, I'm really confused, and since my headphones are off, I can hear stifled wailing from somewhere behind me. I get up and follow as she and I walk to the back of the plane. At the very last row, there's a woman in clear distress with a few other passengers and another decidedly annoyed-looking flight attendant around her. The flight attendant I'm following turns to me and says, this woman says she's in a spiritual crisis and asked for us to find if anyone on the plane is a minister or a deacon. We looked at the manifest and saw the reverend in front of your name and wondered if you could please help her calm down. As she's saying this, the lady, I'd say she was around 65 or so, looks at me with puffy eyes and a red face and she just looks so sad. I'm kind of on the spot here. If I say no, I really feel like this woman is going to continue carrying on, making everyone's flight miserable. But at the same time, one, she's not my responsibility. Two, I'm not the kind of practicing reverend I'm sure she's looking for. Three, I'm an atheist. I feel like I'd be misleading her to step in. There's something very disingenuous about thinking my college degrees could come close to the work of a real religious leader does for his people. Four, I don't want to get involved in this level of potential crazy that's the public crisis on an airplane, of all places. Five, I really just want to be left alone. I look at the flight attendant and tell her I'm sorry. I'm a reverend in name only, and I don't think I'm what they need. She looks pretty dejected and says she understands, but really, the woman just needs someone to talk to as she's coming back from her son's funeral. She says I'm free to go back to my seat, of course, and she'll let the lady know I can't help her. Y'all, my heart broke for this woman. Maybe it was because I was dealing with my own grief or because the lady just looked so broken, but I really felt for her. I leaned over the seat in front of her and told her I was not a real practicing reverend, but if she just needed someone to listen to her, I'm all ears. I spent the rest of my flight in her husband's seat and he got to sit in mine in first class. He looked like he maybe needed it more than I did, to be honest. Her name was Lydia and she talked my ear off about her son for four or more hours. We laughed, we cried. I really wanted to just sit in peace in my own seat and ignore the world, but I'm glad I could be there for Lydia. She was just overwhelmed and it all came spilling out when she least expected it.
I totally get it. Anyway, had the flight attendant told me what was going on before taking me down the plane to Miseryville, I would have immediately let her know I couldn't help. I wonder if it had been someone with doctor in front of their name and a medical emergency was happening, if the flight attendant would have sprung someone in cardiac arrest on a physicist or a classical history professor. Sounds like a Monty Python sketch. Clarification. Was I annoyed that I got roped into helping this woman? A little at first, I'm not going to lie. I felt a little ambushed and I was in a pretty dark place trying to hold it together myself. But I think you're confusing mild annoyance with malice and maybe that's because I have a dark sense of humor which is reflected in how I write. Ultimately, I chose to sit with her. I thought my sympathy for her was clear in the post. I had an out. I could have gone back to my seat and put my headphones on. It didn't seem right to do that though. Here was this poor grieving woman and my own emotions were so raw because I too was traveling back from putting a loved one in the ground. Her husband was there, yes. I don't know why she didn't find solace in him, but everyone grieves differently and he too was going through it, I'm sure. Am I the jerk for ruining a family dinner because of my golden child sister? I, 17 female, have a younger sister, Emily, who's 16. Even though they don't say it explicitly, Emily is clearly my parents' favorite kid. I can understand why they're proud of Emily. She's a straight-A student, has the lead roles in student theater, swims competitively, is popular at school, and is very good-looking. I, on the other hand, am probably more plain. I work hard at school, but I'm not as outgoing or as intelligent as Emily, and I don't excel at any extracurriculars like she does. My parents always celebrate Emily. We have certificates of her work on the fridge, always have outings and meals to commemorate her achievements, and attend all of her swim events and plays. I know my parents love me, but I don't get close to the level of attention, even when I work hard. The other night, we went out with my parents, uncle, aunt, and cousins. We had just been to one of Emily's shows, and she recently got accepted into a summer scheme she was wanting to complete. The whole meal revolved around discussing Emily and how proud everyone was of her achievements. I don't think I was mentioned even once. I'm usually more reserved or just bite my tongue, but midway through the meal, I shouted out, Maybe if you paid more attention to me and not just your golden child, you'd have more things to celebrate. Everyone just went silent, and my mom said that we had discussed this when we got home and not to ruin the meal. Emily looked shocked and close to crying. To say the rest of the meal was awkward would be putting it lightly. <laughs> yeah, I bet. When we got home, my parents shouted at me for embarrassing them and said that Emily deserves to be celebrated and that if I did something that merited celebration, I would receive the same treatment. I said how unfair this was, and nothing I do gets recognized regardless. Emily joined in and said she works hard and deserves to be recognized for that, and as the older sister, I should grow up and actually work for once if I want her success. I haven't spoken to Emily since then, and my parents are still annoyed at me for ruining the meal. Am I the jerk? I feel for you. Because I once blew up because I didn't get a big graduation party like my sister, who everyone loves, and even flew internationally to attend. But it was after I said I didn't want a big party because I'm really uncomfortable being in the spotlight. So yeah, I understand the conflict in one's mind. But you have to be realistic. It is not your sister's fault that she is accomplished. If you both achieved the same thing and they celebrated her and not you, then yeah, that would be crappy parenting. But ignoring her achievements just because you didn't achieve similarly... That would also be crappy parenting. You were rude. You were unkind to your sister who's done nothing but exist as herself. I hate to say it, but those of us who are quiet and don't focus on distinguishing ourselves simply don't give people as much material to work with when it comes to taking an interest in celebrating. You're the jerk. You do deserve to be the focus of praise and interest some of the time, but if you don't do things that can be highlighted as different from the daily grind, that's probably going to be limited to your birthday and hitting standard milestones like graduating high school or getting a new job. You're the jerk. Your sister just had a show and it was to celebrate a good show. So of course Emily's going to be the main focus. You're jealous of your sister, which happens when you have an overachieving sibling. But it's not her fault how your parents act towards her and she shouldn't have her moment ruined because of it. Please apologize to Emily for treating her so poorly for simply doing her best. Just like you want your parents to be proud of you, she wants the same and deserves it when she does something good. You're the jerk. This golden child phenomenon seems to be rampant in this sub, but I think it speaks more to one person's insecurity than it does to favoritism. Whether it's true or not, this wasn't the place or method to address your feelings appropriately.
Am I wrong for ultimately wanting a divorce even after my wife has showed much more effort in our relationship? For context, coming into the new year, I had no idea my wife had been at the bare minimum having an emotional affair with a coworker. On New Year's Eve, before I found out about this, she came home and acted extremely cold towards me and our kids. She was angry. Earlier on that evening, she asked if she could go out to have one drink with a female coworker, who I know and trusted. I told her that was cool, but that the kids were staying up for the ball drop, so as long as she could be back to celebrate with them, I was fine with it. Well, she ended up getting off work at 11.30 and barely had enough time to get home. After the ball drop, she cried and cried. I asked her what was wrong, and she said she got invited to her friend's house to have drinks with them. All three of them were women, all married. I had no issue. I said, look, I'm not sure what's wrong and why you're crying about this. That's fine. You deserve a girl's night out every once in a while. I don't mind watching the kids. Just go. I put the kids to bed. She left. And then about three hours later, so 3 a.m., I try to contact her. No answer. I wait about 15 minutes. Call her again. No answer. I call her friend who she's supposed to be with. No answer. She then texts me back five minutes later and says, yeah, I'm still coming home tonight. We're still drinking. Never in our six years of marriage had I felt a gut feeling that something else was going on, but that night it all hit me. I went through our phone records and found another number I was unfamiliar with that she had been in contact with all night, ignoring my calls, texting that number in between, etc. She had also been texting this number for a three-month period daily. I never suspected that she would be texting another guy while right beside me watching family movies either but she had been. How I didn't see this, I have no idea. Maybe she had this individual listed as mom in her phone. I don't know. I had never gotten this vibe or feeling our entire marriage. I was blindsided by it. Anyway, I confront her about it through text with the proof like an idiot. She speeds home, deletes everything in her phone. No way of getting the backups restored. No way of ever knowing if she met up with this guy or not. Upon finding this out, I immediately told her I wanted a divorce. It was at this point she began going off on me, talking crap about everything I had been doing to keep us financially stable. The 18-hour work days that kept a roof over our heads. She told me that I needed to leave even though I pay rent and both our kids are asleep. I refused. We slept in different rooms that night and the next day she tried to act like nothing even happened, claiming that she remembered we had fought but couldn't remember what it was about. So I show her the phone records even though I'm positive she was just trying to pull some crap. She confesses who the individual was and said they flirted a lot but never met up. I told her if that was true, she'd have no issues restoring the text messages she deleted, at which point it was confirmed she deleted everything and deleted her last backup. She also saved a backup after she had deleted everything. Since then, she's tried hard to convince me that they never did anything and never saw each other outside of work. I keep finding bits and pieces of things that don't make sense. Chunks of text deleted from her friend's messages around that time. Pictures on her Google Drive from that night, where she was with who she said she was, deleted from her phone. For what reason? The worst evidence I have is from a two-hour period on New Year's Eve. They stopped texting each other, then randomly started texting again around 3 a.m. when I started calling and got that feeling. My gut tells me that she left her friend's place, went to his place, and went back. Or she went straight to his place from our place, then went to her friend's when she found out I was calling them. There are also spicy pictures of her that she never sent to me on her Google Drive taken on Snapchat. She's since given me all of her attention. The texting stopped, she shows me everything in her Snapchat and even downloads her data to show me she's not hitting other people up. I'm seeing the side of her I haven't seen since we were married all those years ago. But I can't help but trust my gut in demanding a divorce. I feel like she's kept things from me, not knowing for sure is hurting me inside. My parents know all of this and keep pressuring me to work it out and not dwell. My brothers are saying, forget that, get a divorce. Am I wrong in getting a divorce? Keep in mind the dates. It's now been over four months since this occurred. I'm positive she cut the individual completely out, but I still can't get over that not 100% knowing and my gut is telling me that she's still lying. Edit. This individual in question is an employee she manages, as in she's his direct supervisor. I've heard there are greater legal consequences for this, but I have no idea. Update. Currently on morning break at work. Been reading through the comments. I have off tomorrow all day, so I will be weighing my options when I get some time to myself. I've been ignoring her since last night, and she's been snapping and calling me all morning to see what's wrong.
She cheated and she still has a Snapchat? And still works with the guy? This ain't good, bro. I'm sorry, but once the trust has died, so has the relationship. You will never feel safe with her again. You are not wrong. I'm sorry this happened to you. If you don't feel you're going to be able to rebuild and trust her again, no matter the amount of openness, changed behavior, and counseling, then it's best to move on. Good luck. Well, what do you think? Should OP get a divorce or not? Please let us know. Cheaters never change. Time for a divorce, bro, or you'll be going through the exact same thing again before you know it. Am I the jerk for ordering food when my kids go to sleep so I don't have to share? Occasionally, when my four kids go to bed, I'll order myself a little something from Uber Eats or DoorDash after a hard day so I don't have to share with the kiddos. Usually, since I'm always the first one to wake up, I'll put the packing beside the indoor trash can and take it out to the outdoor trash can in the morning. My kids ended up waking up first that morning, and they saw the takeout food packaging and ended up waking me up, asking me what I ate and if they could have some of it. I told them there was none left and I ate it all last night. Thought that would be the end of it, but after I dropped them off at their dad's for the week, my kids stay at their dad's house one week out of the month rather than just doing weekends. My kid's father ended up spamming my phone with text messages accusing me of misappropriating my kid's funds that he sends every month. My kid's father gives me $100 for each kid a month, which is about $400 a month when it comes to it. It isn't much, but I'm fine with it because he usually makes up for it by buying the kids what they need when an issue arises. FYI, nothing is court ordered. I have a job as a daycare worker and use my own money I make myself to buy Uber Eats or DoorDash food. He also accused me of being a bad mother because I'd rather order food for just myself without thinking of my kids who were with me at the time and that I should have just waited until they were with him for the night. I had a really bad day that day and I just wanted to do something to cheer myself up and sometimes food does the trick for me. If I were to order something for everyone, it would have cost a whole lot of money that I wasn't interested in spending. And if I were to share, by the time my food got back to me, it would have just been the food wrapper. So, do y'all think I'm the jerk? Don't like 100% of parents hide in their closet to eat M&Ms because they don't want to share the one selfish treat they got that week? This dude needs to shut up and pay more support. Not the jerk. Not the jerk. It's a treat you get for yourself. And $400 a month for four kids is nothing. Amen. I got $400 per month for one kid starting in 2004 when we divorced. The kid was six and I got a cost of living increase each year. $400 per month for four kids is insanely low. Fun fact, if she gets a court order, he'll end up paying more like $4,000 a month and he'll have to pay her retroactively. So he'll end up owing a lot of money which will be put into a payment plan and come straight from his paycheck each month. OP, your ex is a controlling jerk. He knows he's taking advantage of you financially and the fact he called you over takeout, completely ridiculous. Sorry, but I'm not agreeing with everyone else here. I think you are the jerk. Do you buy your kids takeout just for them and nothing for you? Of course not. You're talking about kids for goodness sake. They like to have treats too. It's one thing to have a candy bar or maybe some other snack you enjoy after your kids go to bed, but to order out and hide it from them? That's selfish. You're the one who decided to have kids, so don't treat them like they're unworthy of what you think you're worthy of. You're the jerk. Selfish and stingy. You could have just waited till they were actually gone before ordering if you wanted to be so selfish. Who orders food for just themselves and leaves their kids out? You even sneak the wrappers out, knowing they would be jealous and feel bad. They don't have their own money to spoil themselves. It's your job. When you have kids, you don't get to spoil only yourself. You have other people to think about. You're the jerk. This vote has nothing to do with your ex or child support or anything. This is between you and your kids. You are regularly treating yourself to things your kids would also like to have and hiding it from them. If it was a once in a blue moon, okay. But this seems quite the regular habit. If you door dash three times for yourself, you could instead use that money for a nice splurge for the whole family. Obviously, the kids were hurt and disappointed. That's on you to deal with now. Whatever your ex says is really irrelevant. If money's really tight, that makes this even harder for them. Focus on a splurge they could share in or at least confine your treats to when they're at their father's house. If this is a kind of splurge that the kids never ever get and there aren't hardly any splurges of any kind for them and now they know you do this for yourself when they are sleeping, seriously, 
that's painful. My stepdaughter wants nothing to do with me, but demands I pay for her wedding. My wife passed when my sons were 8 and 4 respectively. Since then I remarried and my new wife and I have been married for 11 years now. She herself was married before and had a daughter of her own from her own past marriage. Her ex-husband's story is its own saga, but suffice to say he's alive but isn't in their life anymore. When we married, my biological kids were 13 and 9 and my stepdaughter was 12. For 11 years, I tried to make some bridges. I would get her gifts and try to make sure she always got what she wanted. I did everything I could to make her happy. I would drive her to school, be at her extracurriculars. I paid for the nicest private schools for her that I could. Not to mention, I worked day and night so I could give her the lifestyle she deserved. My wife is a housewife, a choice she made after she voluntarily quit her job in marketing. I tried my best and treated her just like my sons, but she continued to hate me. This came to a head specifically when my stepdaughter graduated about five years ago. While my eldest son had invited my wife, his stepmom, to his graduation, my stepdaughter refused to invite me. She had two tickets, but she only invited her mother. Her grandparents refused as they live in my wife's native country. When I asked why, she said, You're not my dad, you didn't raise me, and I don't want you in my life. I was heartbroken. I tried very hard for her to like me, but she still hated me. Still, I paid for her college. I paid for both of my son's colleges as well. Nevertheless, a few months back, she informed my wife that she will be getting married. I only found out when my wife told me. What was even more devastating is that she said she would come home to celebrate and I bought a cake, balloons, and so much more. Then, last minute, she changed plans. She just told my wife that she should come over to her apartment without my sons and I. I was upset. When I did eventually call to congratulate her, she just tried to end the conversation as quickly as she could. The last thing I had asked was maybe the honor of having a father-daughter dance with her, which she shot down. I said nothing, but then came the bill, and my wife said she needed some money for her wedding. I considered it long and hard, but clearly, as she didn't consider me as her father, I said I would not be paying for her wedding. I told my wife that she had money saved up. It was her choice if she wanted to spend that or not but I would not be paying for her wedding. She was furious with me. She said she barely had any money saved up and I was being an awful person. I received calls from all of my wife's family telling me that I should pay, mainly her immediate family, like my father-in-law and brother-in-law. The whole thing has become a mess. It's divided our family, but I'm still holding my ground. Am I the jerk? First edit, I wanna be clear. I will absolutely be paying for my son's wedding when it comes. Second edit, I want to also clarify that this is going to be far from a minor financial inconvenience. While I am sufficiently wealthy, it's still not something that will go easy on my bank account. My wife's family is Indian. Her wedding is going to have probably around 400 to 600 people. Third edit, my wife has been an amazing mother to both our boys and our girl. She is a loving wife who runs a phenomenal house. She tried to get her daughter close to me as well, to little consequence. I also do not think that I could be where I am without her, and certainly before her I was nowhere close to where I am in my success. It's also true that my money has always been our money, and she does most of the accounting for the house anyway. If I do this, I would be doing this for her, not my daughter. Moreover, if she really wanted to, she could do it without my approval. More than half the money is in bank accounts with her name on it. If she wanted to, she could. She never has, and I do not think she will. If she does, that will be her choice, and even if she told me she was going to, I do not think I will stop her. Not the jerk. Your stepdaughter said you're not her dad. You're not obligated to pay for her wedding since you are not her dad, even though you tried to support her. Tell them to get the money from her biological dad. That's the very least they can do. At this age, her daughter will never accept you as a father figure, so you can accept that fact and act accordingly. I wonder if the wife's family has ever seen OP as anything more than an ATM. Now that the ATM has refused to dispense any more money, they're furious. How much more is OP supposed to bend over backwards for them? Just say good riddance, OP. You'll be better off without them. Not the jerk. Why on earth would you pay for this? You probably aren't even on the guest list. She's used to using your money. That should have stopped a long time ago, but now is as good a time as any. Not the jerk. Frankly, your wife holds a lot of responsibility as to why your stepdaughter does not respect you. 
It would appear your paying for private school and paying for her college is not a good enough reason for your wife to have some very strong conversations with your daughter about respect and what family actually means. Not the jerk, but I need to ask, why did you ask for a father-daughter dance when you know she doesn't feel that way about your relationship? I understand and respect that you tried to treat her as your own and you treated her above and beyond when maybe she didn't deserve it. But do you feel that maybe you overstepped throughout her life and it made her so uncomfortable that she doesn't want a relationship with you? I'm sorry, but you don't owe her money for her wedding when based on past events, you and your sons might not even be invited. Or you'll just be invited as your wife's plus one. Do this next. Tap here on your screen to come see our new podcast playlist where you'll find thousands of hours of the best stories you've ever heard. Or tap the one on the right. That episode is specifically just for you based on other videos you've enjoyed the most.